A lizard, tall and beautiful, turns towards... I'm so glad you've come. Are you here to... <clears throat> water my flowers? I've been so, so lonely since my man went away to fight the coming war. I need someone to take care of me. She gives you a cool look, then a flirtatious smile. Not in the mood for games. Me neither. So what shall we do? Would you like me to dance for you? Or would you like to hear a poem? I like a lover who likes the arts. Here we go. <clears throat> a princess was once locked indoors. She looks around at the stone walls of her room, then takes a step towards you. She tended to get very bored. She arches an eyebrow and takes two more steps towards you. She stops, lets you come to her. A hunter did save her. She gives you a wry smile that makes her eyes twinkle. And asked for a favor. She drapes her arms around your neck, moves her face so it almost touches yours. She looks you in the eyes. Her lip twitches as if ready to kiss. And then whispered. Take me. I'm yours. She leans into you and kisses you passionately, her forked tongue probing. She searches your face for the lie, doesn't find it. But she takes you into her arms. Your world explodes in bliss. Good morning, little birds. Good morning, Gil. Hey, this is my lover. Lover, this is my friend Gil. Shut it, lover boy. I'm sorry, darling. It's a setup. You paid for a trip to paradise. Now you're paying for the return journey. To wit, we're taking all your stuff. If you want it back, you can take it up with Loha. She gives you a pity pout. I'm sorry, darling, but business is... And time is money. So if we're all clear on what's happening here, we'll be leaving with your stuff.
I'll yield to none. Hurts, doesn't it? Corners. Feeding.
Oh, my darling. You're so very good at what you do. I hope you're not sore about what just happened. Huh, this again. Junk. She returns the smile with interest, a twinkle in her eye. It was worth it, wasn't it? Now, baby, you should leave. Oh, darling, I've forgotten you already. Curiosity right. kills the cat, or gets it sent to Fort Joy. I can see a hmm. from a mile away. You're willing to risk Fort Joy for one night with a lizard? Then you're an idiot. Right about that. Right as rain, go.
Curiosity kills the cat, or gets it sent to Fort Joy. Hmm. You're willing to risk Fort Joy for one night with a lizard? Then you're an idiot. And I'm saying you can trust me. I can see a sorcerer from a mile away. Curiosity kills the cat. And you can't or gets careful, it sent to Fort know? Joy. If I can get Alexander, hmm. I can get any of us. You're willing to risk you're Fort Joy for that. one night Why with a rain, lizard? Then you're an idiot. Curiosity kills the cat, or gets it sent to Fort Joy. Hmm. You're willing to risk Fort Joy for one night with a lizard? Then you're an idiot. Curiosity kills the cat, or gets it sent to Fort Joy. Hmm. You're willing to risk Fort Joy for one night with a lizard? Then you're an idiot. Curiosity kills the cat, or gets it sent to Fort Joy. Hmm. You're willing to risk Fort Joy for one night with a lizard? Then you're an idiot. You've got to pick who you can trust. You got that right, Hilka. You got that right. And I'm saying you can trust me. I can see a sorcerer from a mile away. And you can't be too careful, you know? If I can get Alexander, I can get any of us. You're right about that. Right as rain, you go. Curiosity kills the cat, or gets it sent to Fort Joy. Hmm. You're willing to risk Fort Joy for one night with a lizard? Then you're an idiot. Curiosity kills the cat, or gets it sent to Fort Joy. Hmm. You're willing to risk Fort Joy for one night with a lizard? Then you're an idiot. Curiosity kills the cat, or gets it sent to Fort Joy. Hmm. 
you're willing to risk Fort Joy for one night with a lizard, then you're an idiot. You've got to pick who you can trust. Curiosity killed the cat. He gives you his mischievous grin. I did promise you the experience of a lifetime. If they got nothing to hide, they got sorcerers. A most vile His eyes widen. His lip quivers. You expect him to be afraid, even ashamed, but he's relieved. Oh, thank the gods. They had me over a barrel. You have to believe me. It's hard enough to earn a crust around here, and me and the young'un, we've been starving. Oh, sir, the little un was left with me when my wife died. She won't make it without me, the poor child. Livy, the child's name is Livy. She stays in the kitchen while I work. Go look, I swear it's true. I'm not, I swear it. He gives you an earnest look and shows you towards the kitchen. I got a right to live, don't I? Throw him in a hole for all. It's the great. Our most vile incident. A valiant warrior against the boy. What's this? I found something. The cook acknowledges you with a small bow, an oddly formal gesture given... Please, sir, you should not be back here. It's not safe. Livy, you say? The child of Loverick. Livy was no child of Loverick's. The cook smiles at you, as if you were a child. Because he is Loverick. The cook slides a wooden spoon into a simmering pot of broth. She lifts out a goat skull, hooked through the eye socket. This is Livy. Was Livy. Loverick didn't like goats. Once I'm through boiling her bones, he'll be rid of her for good. You're not the first. I doubt you'll be the last. That lying waiter. You can figure this out. Valiant warrior against the void. Taken too early. Oh, no, you're a small good if it bit you on the arse. The path thus ended. The conclusion of a noble bloodline. Who shall rise? Who gains the title most divine? We wait, we wander and wonder, seeking signs from the gods. And may the seven usher us to paradise against all. Hey, up! If it ain't the beast man, can't believe you found driftwood. How do you smell the ale over all that rotten fish? Get it?
The unfamiliar dwarf scratches his head nervously, then chuckles again. He doesn't seem sure what to say next.
Oh, you got business with the boss. Invitation every time. You know the way in. You want an engraved invitation every time? You know the way in.
What would I do? You want an engraved invitation every time? You know the way in. What did something? Look at that. A fresh face. Stout and sturdy. Just how I like my dwarves. Welcome, Biffan approaches you. A drink in his hand and a wide smile on his face. He clearly feels at home in this grimy place. Want a drink? He grins and hands you a drink, full of good cheer. It's really been some adventure so far, eh? One must stop to appreciate the good moments, right? 
And if this isn't a good one, I don't know what is. Ifan looks around at the under tavern, contentment plain in his eyes. Ah, well, plenty of drinks to be had when the world's saved. To Rivalon. Good to meet you, Governor. What's your poison, Dan? A sip? Or a smoke? Aye, so it is. But not just any Drudenay. Oh no. My own special blends. Further down's the arena, see? And the gladiators are always on the lookout for... An edge. I give them that edge. You could say that my darling herbs flower in the flesh and blossom in the brain. So, if you're interested, Governor, all you have to do is use your imagination. How can I make you bloom? No problem. In return for a reasonable donation, that... If he digs all kinds... Much obliged, Governor. And here's your blend. Right good to see you again, Governor. Take all the time you need. Pleasure doing business with Kids you, Governor. At war. Hmm. Tigers fly, the leopards lie, and you, and you, oh! But I know you, don't I? I have seen you in the night, rudderless among the drowned. Just a dream, of course, just a dream. Bugger off. Can't you see I'm trying to relax? Pouch? What pouch? Oh, that was you. Yes, yeah, sorry, bub, but I was pulling your crank. There ain't any pouch. I'll bet you did. So why'd you let me get close enough to nip some gold right out of your pouch, right? Now, like I said, please kindly bugger off. Turn to smoke by now. Go ahead. <sighs> what? It can't be far, can it? Hail, darling. 
call me Dorothea. protect me. She draws close. You feel her breath. Mm. Oh, yes. I have something that you want. But I only bargain with those I deem deserving. Those who have accomplished great things. So, tell me, are you worthy of my gift? Oh dear, you assume something as fleeting as your appearance is enough to impress me. I'm afraid that I can't honor such idle bragging with my favors. Surely you've accomplished something of note. Indeed, this is acceptable. You are nearer the one than most self-described heroes I've known. So, tell me, are you ready for me to grant you your greatest desire? I can't. Not yet. First, you must look into my ring and gaze into the gem, my war. She flashes her ring at you, and you stare at the luminescent stone at its center. You are floating on a current of pure source, surrounded by a kaleidoscope of colors and fuzzy images. On the horizon looms a dark silhouette. As you approach, a beam of light washes the shadow away, revealing to you... A true warrior. You desire great strength. To you, an armed legion is merely a wall of flesh ready to have a path carved through it. I will fulfill this desire. In a kiss. Most delicious. Dorothea sees you and heaves a shuddering sigh. She bites into her lower lip with enough force that a drop of blood seeps out. Blood and something else, something green. Darling, I admit I wish we could share more carnal pleasures. Yet I think a kiss is the height of intimacy. Now come closer. You draw closer and close your eyes, yet her lips do not press against yours, and her hands do not caress your face. She is a woman no longer. Her fang painlessly sinks into your neck. You still hear her words, though they sound muffled, as if filtered through a glass wall. You desired strength, and so my venom gives it to you. We part ways now. I'll remember this moment.
You've seen my true self. As she kisses her forefinger. Now go. Down for a little scuffling and tussling. Let's see if you got some fight in you. Well, that just may interest our current champion, Murga. She'll want to talk with you herself before she'll assent to any challenge. Watch your words, mind. She takes against you. There'll be no talking yourself into her good graces again. Well, you better start caring. Without her approval, on your way then. What do you want? Boss is busy. We don't want to hurt you, Marla. Loha, you've been living under a boulder. Stick around long enough and listen up. Don't waste this. you up from girl to woman, Marla. Like you was my own. This. He lifts his right arm, showing a white bandage beneath his ribs. A wet red spot shows through. This ain't the thanks I expected. Who sent you? <laughs> the formidable dwarf slams his fist on the side table. You hear a loud crack. Enough! Do you know they killed Anhar? Do ya? 
start talking sense or I'll take that tongue right out of your mouth and fry it for supper. Bart, Cade, get her to talk or bleed her out. She ain't one of mine anymore. His sneer travels from the restrained dwarf to you. And you. You're a brave lad waltzing in here now. The dwarf rolls his eyes and shakes his head with a sigh. So who was it that sent you? Gal? Cared? Well, you can tell him that... He squints and tilts his head, then taps his forefinger against his lips, before pointing it directly at you. I know who you are. The beast of the sea. So, what brings you to this good-for-nothing town? You know about that, do ya? Well, before you go blood-crazed, you should know the Queen's no friend of mine, not no more. He hawks a wad of spit on the floor, then motions to the room around him. I'm a businessman. I can't say I always keep things on the up-and-up, but I don't think a rogue pirate's got a lot of room to judge a man for his various... trade concerns. And what Justinia's cooking up ain't so good for my bottom line. I don't want to help Justinia. I want to stop her. I thought you'd see things my way. Come, make yourself comfortable. We'll have a chat when you're ready. What's got into you? You're making this much harder than it needs to be. Almost feel bad for ya. Almost. Let it out, beastie boy. You gonna scratch my back or what? Family matter. She's one of mine. Acting like her brains are scrambled, though. Came after me with a knife. Lucky for me, she caught an old wound. Scar slowed down the knife. So, how'd you make it out of Fort Joy? I've got people. They've got people. People talk. The Magisters never shut up long enough to listen. But me? I love a good story. Here's one I heard lately. A group of strangers landed on the beaches outside town. 
Nice to see us, people. You're one of her little seekers. Chasing down Godwoken and begging them to save us all. <laughs> I admit I didn't see that one coming, beast. You're making this much harder than it needs to be. What's got into you? So, what else do you want? Reckon I do. Knowing Siva, she sent you looking for sorcerers, I bet. And it just so happens I can help you with that. Along with that whole queen thing. Depending on what you can do for me. You gonna keep you around much longer. I've got people to maintain. You help me, I help you. Simple as that. He gestures towards the bandage across his side. Had a bit of family trouble lately. My girl Marla got it in her head to come after me with a short blade. That ain't like Marla. Ain't like her to pull the silent treatment either. Something's going on. And wouldn't you know it, that blade she used wasn't any normal bit of steel. Belonged to another of my people. Guy's name is Mordus. Bit of a loner, but smart as hell. I sent a few guys to go check on him. See if he knew what had got into Marla, but no one can find him. I'd like a word with the guy. That'd be up to him, wouldn't it? No one's seen him in a good few. I've got some people checking out his house near the tavern now, though. Tell them I sent you, and they'll let you know what they've found. Truth is, they might be glad to see you. Reckon a sorcerer will have better luck finding one of their own. Well, like I said, Maldus is a special guy. A sorcerer, matter of fact. Maybe even one of the ones Seaver's after. If there's something you want to find out from him, you might want to ask before I have my word with him. Good luck.
want an engraved invitation every time, you know the way in. This must be the place the Lohar mentioned. It looks unassuming enough. I need to get clever with this lock. The dwarf is unnaturally still. You might mistake her for a corpse, were it not for a slight twitch of her eyelids. She calmly opens her left eye, then her right. I ain't one of your crew, Captain. What do you want? The dwarf unfolds her arms and shoots. All right, brother. Right, glad Lohar ain't left us here to wither. Those brutes are taking their sweet time down there. I gotta send word soon. Who knows? Anything that gives away what Mordus has been up to. Probably got all sorts of tricks for covering his tracks, but the goons downstairs should sniff out something. That weird priest's been hanging around Lohar for ages. Now he's vanished. Those half-wits below will know more. Get to it then. But down the hatch then. Maybe if we had a crowbar. You think a crowbar would open this thing? Oh. You got rocks knocking around that noggin of yours. We'd have more luck asking Duda to open it for us than for it to budge by our own hands. Maybe if we had a crowbar. You think a crowbar would open this thing? Oh, you got rocks What's knocking this? around that noggin I of yours. I found something. We'd have more luck asking Duda to open it. There we go. Finally. The door's opening. By Duna's dagger, brother. You here to free us or kill us? The male dwarf expels two lungfuls of air and glances happily at his companion. We've only been fretting here for a few hours, but it's felt like days. That snot-nosed priest's as slippery as a snake in an oil drum. Ain't found nothing that lets on what Mordus is up to. Only thing we managed were to close that door and get us stuck. And if there's another door out there, never could find it. Lohar ain't gonna be pleased. Ain't no telling where that priest has gone to. Started acting all funny not so long ago, then flew the coop. 
Well, at first, he was just buddying around with Lohar and the rest, you know. But then he'd start looking all sickly and run off for a day or two. Then some stranger tried taking old Lohar down, but got himself caught and tied up. Ain't no coincidence Mordis went hanging around then. She taps a finger against her forehead. A woman knows things. Nothing's getting past me. Best we head off then. We... The shrine depicts Duna, yet has clearly seen better days. Scratches and fissures deface its exterior, and it your words are swallowed by the chamber's thick air. The stone is cold against your... Lohar will want to know of this. This won't do. If I can get stuck, then I can get unstuck. You run your hands along the exterior until your the stone is cold against your palm. There's no mistaking the sound of...
A lot of blood. Better get out there before Moldus makes it all the way past Arx. I asked you for a man, not a note. He takes the letter from your hands and reads it quickly, face hardening with anger as he reaches the end. Bloody. God's damn spit-sucking weasel! This is bad. Not just for me and mine. Not just for you and yours. This is bad. For everyone. Hell if I know, but it don't sound good. Seems as though Mordus wasn't mine after all. Trouble is, I don't know whose he is. Of course. That's why I haven't heard from the cave. Sabotage. Listen up, I need your help. We all do. Mordus has his hands on something dangerous. Something I was trying to protect us from. Not just my folks. The whole damn realm. Look, me and mine, we move classified cargo. Take it right off Magister ships and put it into the hands of those that will use it rightly. Trouble is, we came across something no one ought to have. Not the Magisters, not my folks, not the gods themselves. I ordered it to be destroyed. I guess Mordus, whoever he's working for, wants it for themselves. That can't happen. The less you know, the better. Trust me. Stop Mordus and I'll take care of the rest. My people had an operation up in the caves outside town. Good access to red ships and plenty of privacy, too. I haven't heard from them in a couple of days now. I thought maybe we'd lost the messengers to Voidwoken in the hills, but now... I think it's worse than I thought. I bet my lucky left foot Mordus is in the cave. You've got to get to him before he gets his hands on that cargo. Pray to whoever you pray to that it ain't too late. Finally, someone with a little sense around here. Give me your map. I'll show you where we were operating. Where I don't want to know what'll happen if he gets what he's after. Looking rough, the battered dwarf pulls her lips back into a garish, open mouth grin. <laughs> right, good to see you again, Governor. Take all the time as you're doing business with you, Governor. Dozen rotten eggs dropped. I don't... don't let up now. Keep hauling that cargo. That's it. The barrels and the chests. On the double. You too, Julian. Show them how it's done, man. Go on, you mute sacks of flesh. Put your backs into it. I'll not lose another day to the tide. The Lord Dread awaits. It sails billow with Dallas's breath. I'll... The Magister stops barking orders. 
He sniffs the air like a predator, turns to face you, the wolf eyeing the deer. I'm going nowhere right at this moment. Nowhere since something crossed my path and oh so very sharply piqued my interest. Tell me, have you ever been strung up by the hands? Your body swinging like a bell's clapper as your bones are being broken with cast iron rods. We do cruel things unto others and unto ourselves because we must. He licks his lips. Dry flesh turns wet. See, I'd like to string you up too. Rack you with rods and leave you dangling over a puddle of your own blood and piss. Oh, no, 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 that won't do at all. Innocence is a mask that doesn't fit you. I'm very good at what I do, see? I don't even need a sauce hound yapping at my side. There was a whiff of something in the air when you approached. A current of filth, that is to say, sauce. Best convince me I was mistaken. He leans in closer and sniffs the air once more. Interesting. So I was mistaken. Must have been ambition I smelt on you, not the magic that dare not speak its name. Very well. In that case, we'll forego the gallows and turn straight to the hunt. The very definition of your order's existence. Seems peaceful here, doesn't it? A quiet day in a quiet town. One wouldn't think these drifting woods toss on dwarf troubled waters, but they do. Consider for a moment the dwarf. What is he? What are you, hmm? A mule, a beast of burden. But some defy that role. There are rats among them, dancing to their rat queen's tune. I've need of a rat catcher. Of course, I must depart post haste. But Julian here will stay behind. Stay behind? But... but I've my orders. Same as you. <laughs> like I said, Julian is staying. And with that, I must be off. No hard feelings about the death threats, of course. How about we part shaking hands instead of stringing them up? How very... One last thing. The Magisters here are diligent men and women. A stranger like you may run into trouble. Should this happen, just wave this piece of parchment in their eager little faces. Adieu and good luck. The time has come, my stitched lit lovelies. We set sail. Get on board and man your stations. The Magister is rubbing the dirt off his robes, none the worse for wear, apparently, from the blast of magic that knocked him off his feet. You! The supposed source hunter! I'd be whining and dining aboard the Lord Dread if it weren't for you! Your meddling in Magister affairs had better be worth it! A man of stature wouldn't be moored on a dock with no one but dead fish for company. Here I am, and here you are. So, to business. Now answer me. Did you meet with a Magister caravan on your way into town? The hour's growing late, and I'm beginning to worry something might have gone wrong. By the bishop's bones, you saw it! Out with it, man! What happened? Void woken. 
That means source was used. Which means some third party must have attacked first. And of a fair off Raymond, that old goat, always suspected there's more to the Driftwood Dwarves than meets the eye. Hate to admit it, but I think he may be right. Too many things have gone wrong along Reaper's Coast to attribute to bad luck. Magister ships sinking, weapons disappearing, and as you've seen, a caravan attacked and destroyed. Rumor has it the Dwarvian Queen herself is behind these acts of sabotage. That is what I want you to prove. They've always been snakes in the grass. Cheap labor, sure. And hard workers, too. Half of them are their queen's spies. Her eyes, her ears, her poison-pouring hands. You know what Queen Justinia is like, surely. A tyrant and a master strategist to boot. There's a local thug, Lohar. He runs an operation out of... It may be interesting to have a word with him. Find out what he's up to. Where I really want you to ferret around is Reaper's Bluffs, to the west of Driftwood. It's wild territory, remote and hostile, where I believe the dwarves may have set up a base of operations away from prying eyes. Should you find any such place, and better yet, proof that Lohar is working on behalf of Queen Justinia, you will be handsomely rewarded, I assure you. In that case, go forth and let the hunt come... I've got years of fishing experience behind me, and I'm reduced to begging to gut and clean what catches make it back. You, stranger, what are you doing here? I'm all right, as long as I don't think about it too much. Easy now. We're not looking for trouble. Not that kind, anyway. We're after a man. Grey beard, grey cloak. A little crazed in the eyes. Seen him? The Magister's eyes now. It's vital that you report anything unusual. We must not... He arrived in Driftwood some days ago, dressed as a tinkerer. He bought... As soon as he knew we were onto him. You now be on. Watch it. No Those are source hounds. Halt! The hounds smell source on you. Plenty of it, by the sound of them. Haven't got a collar for you. Damn it. I'm sorry, but I can't let you leave. Hounds, at the ready.
into the dark with you. You met me as a lone wolf, but did I ever tell you of my past in the Divine Order? Ifan looks uneasy, even Hangdog. Ever tell you I worked with Lucian? Fact is, I was once pretty high up in his Divine Order. He was... a good man. Trust me, today's Divine Order has nothing to do with Lucian's. Everything, everything, started to go downhill during the war, right after my last mission. He closes his eyes as he speaks, forehead creasing with effort. You know sacrifices had to be made during the war? Well, Lucian knew he needed to use Death Fog to eliminate the Black Ring. But doing that would would kill the elves also. So we came up with a plan. I was to hurry through the forests with a rift portal for the elves, so they could escape before the death fog exploded. But something went wrong. I was too late. The death fog exploded just as I arrived, and the... the elves were... were... Trying isn't enough, and I won't rest until I know why Lucian didn't wait. Anyway, let's keep moving.
What's this? I found something. Fisherman stares at the water, muttering to himself. The missus will kill me. She'll tear me a new mouth halfway down my neck. Fish will bite all right, but they're barely fit to feed a dwarf. I've a worse problem than that. Way, way worse. I've gone and dropped my wedding ring in the water. I didn't mean nothing by it, friend. Just commenting on the dwarf's legendary iron stomach. Some of my best friends are dwarfs. I was casting a line and I cast me bloody wedding ring instead. Guess my fingers aren't as fat as they used to be. I could do that, I could. But seeing as the ring has a bit of sauce to it, I'm not asking you to risk your life on account.
Prepare yourself.
prepare yourself. A horrified fisherman stares at the water, muttering to himself. That was terrifying. I need to get myself a new line of work. Something as far away from the water as I can go. Goat herd, high on a mountain, spice trader in the desert. Anything but this. If the missus will go for it, of course. She likes the beach. She would if she ever found out about this, which of course she won't, but I can't thank you enough. He slips the ring onto his finger, where it dangles loose. I feel better already. With a new confidence in his stance, he turns back to his fit. Thanks again, stranger. You made my day.
Hail to your house and hail to the queen. Does me damn good to see a stout proud dwarf and no mistake. You wash your mouth with soap, lad. I'd slap you straight if you weren't so damn. Should have known better than to expect the right stuff from another driftwood dwarf. Bunch of doormats, the lot of them. Easy for you to say, isn't it? I bet you could punch a void walker and get it to apologize for getting in your way. But I ain't a violent man, Jack. Just pisses me off to see dwarfs sink praises of reds. Bloody disgrace, I say. Ho ho ho, that's the spirit now we're talking. Boil them red as them fancy robes. The day will come we'll overthrow them. You mark my words. Until then, I'll practice the art of gutting on spoiled fish. Fugitive? Ah, yeah. I don't think that's something I should be discussing with strangers. That's baloney and you know it. An old dwarf like me ain't so easily tricked, kid. No, no, I shan't be baited. I ain't saying nothing on the topic no more. Gods be buggered fine. I'll tell. I'll tell you all I know. The dwarf leans in and begins whispering conspiratorial. This fella runs along, right? Sweating, panicking. Red's racing after him like hunting hounds. Hide in a barrel, you fool, I yelled. And what do you know? He did. Problem is, he's still in there. Been hours. Can't go nowhere, he can't. Not with the Reds around. You'd swear the shark was smiling at you. Behind the containers, the fish in one of the barrels shifts slightly. Please, you have to help me. The Magisters have gone mad. They're trying to kill me. Or worse, drag me off to Fort Joy. Please help me. I don't want to die. I don't want them to take me.
I have no idea. I only arrived in town a few days ago. I sold a few items to Grandmaster Kem in Ox and stopped off here on my way to Sysil. I was just sitting in the tavern, minding my own business, and the Magister started screaming at me. I ran and, well... You hear a quiet sob from the fish. Why is this happening? I didn't do anything. There's a moment of silence from within the barrel. Some of the fish seem to shift uncomfortably. I, I may have been studying some new scrolls I bought. They might have been, well, they called for sauce. But that doesn't mean I had anything to do with the disappearances. I'm a tinkerer. I'll fix things for a living. I would never hurt anyone. I don't know. It could be anyone in the tavern. None of them have any love for the Magisters. Please, all I know is it wasn't me. I just need to get out of Driftwood. I can't risk being seen. But if you can get out of town, I can escape to Ark, please. I'll do anything. Just don't let them see me. Don't... Thank you. If I lose, I'll follow your lead. And? What news? You found him. Excellent. Now stand aside. The Magister steps forward with a smile and... What? What? No, you said you'd help. You promised. You promised you'd get me out. You utter fool. Very well. If you want to share... Doesn't it? Doesn't it?
truly revolting. Last, I can breathe again. At last, I was sure I'd die in that wretched place. You have my thanks. If not for you, I probably would have been found, gutted, and salted. I can't just saunter away. Who knows what might be lurking in a place like this? But once I'm sure the way's clear, I'm running to Ox like a cat with its tail on fire. I'm done with this stinking town. Please, I can't just let you walk away. Here. A damp, scale-covered roll of paper emerges from the barrel. In fact, that's what started all the trouble in the first place. The Magisters nearly lost their minds when they saw me with it. It must have belonged to one of their mission friends. They nearly lynched me then and there. They wouldn't listen when I tried to tell them that I got it from the cook. I thought she was an idiot selling it so cheap. Then again, I'm the dolt who ended up in a barrel. But if she has Magister artifacts, she must be the one they're looking for. Oh, of course. I mean, I'm not much of a sorcerer. I have my connections. Hanang's a pretty powerful source master. Incredible control of portals. I've never seen anyone bend space like she can. Last I heard, she was holed up in a house out in Paradise Downs, the farms to the north. There's more than a few magisters around those parts, though. She might still be there. Might not. But I pity any red cloak that gets on her bad side. He pauses for a long moment, his eyes lingering on your weapon. I mean, okay. Look, if you want something else, go to Blood Moon Island. I'm not giving you a name. I'm not giving you anything. Whoever you find there. But if you really want a sorcerer, go to Blood Moon Island. And that's all I have to say about it. I swear, once I get to Ox, I'm going to have the bath of my life. 